Who is to blame for Macbeth's downfall? Join me, Mr. Bell, on Revise the Right Way as we look into this question and help you improve your exam writing as you analyse the right way. So basically, when considering Macbeth's downfall, we're going to look at four key characters and themes. First of all, Macbeth and his ambition. Secondly, Lady Macbeth and the subversion of gender roles. Thirdly, the witches and the supernatural. And then finally, King Duncan's misplaced trust. So, first of all, Macbeth's job is literally to kill people. In the opening of the play, people are praising him for doing just that. His blade is described as a brandished steel which smoked with bloody execution, which means he was killing people so quickly it was almost like his sword was on fire, steaming through his enemies. So it makes sense that he would want to be rewarded for that. Ultimately, his ambition gets in the way of his sense of obligation and duty. You might argue that Macbeth is only convinced to do it when his wife tells him to, but when he says, if it were done, when tis done, then to a well it were done quickly, then it's fairly obvious that he wants it. He just doesn't want it to take long or to overthink it afterwards. So guilt, it seems, is fleeting for Macbeth, who later knows he's in blood, stepped in so far that should I wade no more, returning were as tedious as go over. Macbeth wants power. He wants to be king. And at a certain point in the play, it just makes sense to keep killing people to remain king. Now, secondly, Lady Macbeth. So the subversion of gender roles is interesting in this play, because for a start, all of the actors would have been played by men, which is interesting, I suppose, if you were cast as a witch who, according to Banquo, should be women, and yet your beards forbid me to interpret that you are so. All of this reinforces a social hierarchy where women were treated as inferior, and yet Lady Macbeth books this trend by calling upon spirits to unsex me here, removing the perceived weak side of herself whilst also mocking her husband's weakness and claiming to be capable of taking a baby and dashing its brains out when she tells him to screw your courage to the sticking place. Well, the reference to how Lady Macbeth had given suck is also interesting in an era where noble women didn't traditionally feed their own babies, often employing a wet nurse to feed their child. So either Lady Macbeth isn't as noble as she seems, or she just refuses to conform to these gender stereotypes. In doing so, she forces Macbeth to prove his masculinity when she tells him, you were a man in the past tense. His hubris and ambition combine to force him into committing regicide, which is basically a fancy way of saying killing the king, who was seen as the closest living link to God during this era. Calling upon spirits is one thing. But what about the witches whose prophecies are either a weirdly accurate prediction of events of the play, or basically the only reason why Macbeth decides to kill anyone in the first place? No feign of court or promotion, no new king, right? So most of the audience at the time would be pretty satisfied seeing Macbeth dead at the end of the play. You don't mess with this supernatural if you want good things to happen. Plus, would you listen to creepy people hanging around outside in a thunderstorm? If that isn't raising alarm bells, then there's not much hope for you. Anyway, finally, rounding out our possible suspects is King Duncan. Well, it can't be his fault, surely. But put it this way, if you've already had a traitor in your army who you built an absolute trust in, then you maybe only have yourself to blame if you decide to trust other people to that extent. Maybe he couldn't have expected to stay in the world's worst Airbnb, but come on. Read the reviews first. This guy is pretty good at killing. Doesn't seem very sorry for anyone he's killed. So the point is this. In Macbeth, you can blame lots of factors for Macbeth's downfall. The second set of prophecies don't help. Killing his best friend doesn't help. Killing Macduff's wife and children doesn't help. In the exam, ambiguity is your friend, because the blame can be spread around, and then it makes it easier to make good links between the characters, theme, and setting. The witches always appear in darkness, thunder and rain. The fact that sleep becomes a metaphor for innocence and purity. The natural world that's turned upside down, and Macbeth is just swept along in that wave of blood and destruction that maybe is his fault, but maybe it was something he has no way of controlling. There really is no wrong answer, but understanding and exploring a range of these ideas in depth will help you show a personal engagement and deeper knowledge of the play throughout your response. So what do you think? Who is most to blame? Comment below, and if you've enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to Revise the Right Way.
Thanks for watching.